And welcome back here to the channel Stapaul Azul and Super Academico. And today I'm going to talk about, about about something that I don't know anything. I just finished reading uh, here 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 reading this book, The Theory of Everything by Stephen Hawking. Hawking, and I will challenge myself to give to you some kind of uh, comments about this book, but with the help of the man himself, I mean, <laughs> his avatar on the uh, AI AI app that I downloaded called Character AI. I will ask questions about what he said in the book and comment some things that I didn't understand. Before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give the like, that's the man, the man, Stephen Hawking the late Stephen Hawking don't forget to subscribe to the channel give the like comments and share the video and help the channel wherever you can watching watching over and over again the playlists and all the contents that we have here in both channels so let's begin our contents so here we go talking about this brilliant book of Stephen Hawking by Stephen Hawking the theory of everything he talks about uh, there are six or seven lectures that he, he develops to explain uh, like first the, the history of the the cosmology about the universe talking from the the, the Bible né, the Holy Scriptures to to his theory né, passing through Einstein and Isaac Newton etc and then he goes into the the problem of uh, trying to coexist the theory of, of universal gravitation and the theory of the quantum mechanics that the problem is that the the the, 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 the way that the, the universe functions in the large scale doesn't match with the particles so uh, for for me that's I'm not a physicist, I'm, I'm a social scientist. It's very strange, this kind of, of, this kind of development and this kind of theoretical development because I, I mostly don't understand the, 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 the mathematics of the thing. I just, just pass me over the, the head. But I tried to understand, by the way, he, he, he writes, uh, that he wrote, uh, and the better possible i will transmit to you comment to you with the help of the the ai that emulates his 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 sayings so i i think the first question first question that i'll make here to the to the ai is about uh, why why study the origins of the universe and why this reflects reflects to us today today so let's first see how i'll do that how we develop this question how is studying the universe and its origins is important for us today well i i got really really frustrated now because i was trying to connect with the ai app and it didn't work it just didn't work i i, I access i logged in i sign up i did everything that they said but it didn't work i just given up to use ai to develop these comments about theory of everything by Stephen Hawking but I will not give up of committee okay even I am not a physicist I'm not a specialist on this I'm just a curious like everyone else I think well uh, as I remember the first thing that he, he presents uh, in the book is this uh, history of the cosmologies uh, 
the studies, the theories about how the universe is uh, created, constructed, developed, whatever. And well, first, first of all, uh, of course, he 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 discharges in a way uh, a theory about a creation, a uh, conscience, uh, conscious uh, creation about uh, of the universe by a. Uh, a being, an intelligent being. Uh, for me, of course, it doesn't make sense that think that the universe is some kind of a intelligent creation because I don't see the order that many people see in the universe. But okay, and he speaks about uh, the how developed from Aristotle to. Copernicus to Galileo to Newton to Einstein and to himself and the his contemporaries okay um, well the, the great problem that he presents in the book is how how to explain the complexity of human life uh, the complexity of the life as we know today with so many things that are different that are different in a way that are not the particles that uh, that we are all made of and the, the particles are identical in a way as electrons protons neutrons and the, the, the smaller particles and uh, quarks and whatever that I don't understand, but I think the the great problem that this physicist, this theoretical physicist, physicist uh, face is how to deal with this complexity of life, since supposedly everything everything started with these particles, and then and he describes the the way that developed the the uh, uh, general theory of relativity by Albert Einstein which shows that uh, time and space are dimensions and uh, that are interconnected and since this connection of uh, time and space uh, has a way to affect and be affected by uh, uh, gravity and how this works in the large scale of the universe made a re huge problem in the way we think uh, when we think in, in, the, uh, in the universe being like Aristotle thought uh, the earth and the earth being circle by the the other other uh, bodies in the in the space we 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 tend to see uh, some kind of a order that makes some sense but there are discrepancies in the movements so when the science develop uh, to the the modernity with the development of a telescope with the observations that some some bodies move in a way that shouldn't and eh, the way that not, it wasn't supposed to move then these questions began to to get more and more frequently and when einstein came with this idea of, of bending of time and space because of gravity everything became very <laughs> much more complicated for the physicists since the 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 religious beliefs were like left behind because it was it was not more it wasn't more acceptable acceptable we could not accept anymore this kind of explanation about the the, the universe so uh, the disputes is merely theoretical with not put anything anybody to the bonfire of the 
uh, the re religious beliefs like in the Inquisition in the, the Middle Ages. So uh, uh, we as people, as science people, as people that make questions, go after answers in a rational and possible way. I, 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 I could see, I could realize that uh, m many of the, many of the, the, the formulations came, né, that came from Stephen Hawking and other physicists are very much uh, creative thoughts. They think in a way very creatively with the help of mathematics and they develop this kind of a image of the universe. And I, I thought it was very interesting hearing the book and, and as far as I could understand, they see the universe with a, a collection of bodies, huge bodies, uh, planets, stars, uh, galaxies, and uh, what, what's the, the, the other thing? Uh, nebulas, nebulas, and mainly, mainly the problem with the black holes. So uh, he has two or three lectures about black holes that are very interesting because, uh, as I could understand, the the observation, the the study, the calculations about black holes makes possible to understand how the the, the fabric, how the, the the whatever the universe is made of how it may work in, and how it may have worked in the beginning of the universe uh, in the in its oranges origins uh, with the the big bang and he has in the lectures uh, a very important saying about the big bang because the the the, the echoes the echoes of the big bang are still possible to be here, né? to be heard today with the, the, the discovery of the, the two other scientists that won the Nobel Prize that detected that in every direction that you point out the, the antenna that we, they were seeking microwaves, they discovered that this background echo, background sound of the universe, of the formation of the universe. So uh, they developed this, this, this idea that in if the galaxies are getting farther, farther, uh, more distant from Earth, from our view of the Earth, in every direction that you look, probably in some, some, some when, uh, and some other time in the past, the universe was very small and began to expand. And this expansion is also studied in a very complicated way because they don't know how a, a, a dense, a, a, a being, a, no, not a being, <laughs> a particle, a, a, a mass, a mass so dense that began to develop heat in a way that spans very rapidly and then began to cool and span more slowly and uh, slowly more slow and, and th this explanation helps to understand why the the universe seems to be expanding ways if it's expanding now if you look backwards it would be contracting it's it's the, the way they, they they develop the theory of the big bang and the expansion of the universe but it doesn't it doesn't solve the problem of the particles 
because the particles work in a different way and thi this is the intention of the the book in a humble way i think to to solve this problem a theory of everything because it's a theory that deals with the very large very very large scale of the universe and in according to the very small uh, dimensions of the particles and uh, how that can be understood by a lay person but anybody like me i i heard the book i tried to understand and try to pass on to you in a very simple way just because i'm i'm curious about that and the 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 conclusions that stephen hawking got to in the end of the book is very very touching very emotional because he says until the the 19th century kind of middle 19th century the philosophers people like me yeah, that think of the whole of the life used to understand uh, astronomy understand physics in a, a, a not so complex way that uh, it, 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 it people like me could comment and develop theories about these things but since the sciences began to to get apart né, to get more specific in physics is one of them and get so complex and so particular that m most of the people don't understand what the other science are doing uh, especially something like that and he says that uh, his hope uh, is that eventually with a theory that more you know, more close to the truth attends to the, the to, 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 to explain the universe the history of the universe the, the origin the, the limits the boundaries the infinity of everything that seems so complicated to a lay person is possible to be understood by a lay person in a way like today he, he mentions that like today it's very common someone uh, use the relativity the, the general theory of relativity by Albert Einstein to explain some things in the common life in everyday life and he hopes that if a theory about uh, about the universe that unifies this these fields of the physics of theoretical physics uh, if 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 are able and if something like that is able to to unify the thought about the universe then the layperson and someone that's common that's a regular person can understands minimally right, the, the basis of that so it will be possible to talk about that in a, in a more in a more uh, understandable way it's so not so esoteric in a way that seems something of science fiction okay and i think uh, I think uh, uh, that's why I'm able to. There's something that I, I really enjoy when Stephen Hawking says that about how how do he, uh, how he ex explains the his vision in, of the universe as being finite, finite, but not with an end. That's strange to hear, but he says just like the way the, the the planet earth surface works the planets uh, it's finite it's not it's not eternal it's not infinite infinite it's not an infinite i don't know how this this word so the the planet earth when you 
you walk around the earth you never reach the boundary you never reach the end of the earth because it's rounded and since it's rounded uh, you can never find its ends but it's finite so he says that the the universe probably is something like that if you go straight in a uh, hypothetical spaceship you go straight ahead through all the universe you just reach the same point because it's it's uh, it's finite but it's not doesn't have a boundary doesn't have a, a, a an end it's a weird way to put it but I understood this way and I, I think that's why the that movie uh, interstellar it seems so accurate about this because when the the, the travelers go to the to the the wormhole uh, the wormhole is not something stretchy it's, it's, it's a circle it's a, a sphere uh, you go into but you actually just turning 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 infinitely to the same point so in a way the 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 part when the the character goes to the into the black hole by the way this is Stephen Hawking says this is impossible the, the, if someone go into the black hole uh, for the person that goes to the black hole it's never going to reach anywhere because the the gravity is so so strong and for someone that's outside and watch the, someone going to the black hole just the, the 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 person will become thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner because of the gravity but it would never disappear it's crazy it's a crazy thing to think about but as mathematical mathematically makes sense i think well probably i don't know i don't i don't understand this mathematically yeah, this mathematic this math i don't understand this math i try to understand in a conceptual visual way to myself and i hope to you too yeah, the the audience of these channels and so back into the 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 movie né? interstellar the 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 character when he goes into the black hole he encounters the, the the ship that is coming because actually is, is a rounded place it's a fictional way to show that something that seems finite actually uh, in, uh, doesn't that seems uh, a line seems to be a line axis is not a line it's like a, a way to think about dimensions dimensions and since we have three dimensions we don't think ourselves in another dimension like the time we don't see ourselves in on a fourth dimension in the same way that something you know, some fictitious thing that is in the two dimension world would not understand a third dimension so it's like when a line is looking to other line it doesn't doesn't see the other line as a whole for for example as a whole and that's the, the way the universe would be like and if you just go it doesn't end but in the same way you don't find the boundary there's no place where it ends but it goes around it goes around well i'd like that analogy of the planet earth it's what easy for me to understand i hope i could pass on to you minimally i i hope it's better that well uh I, I, um i'm going to stay in this place today i think i was was a little frustrated that the AI could help me, could help, couldn't help me to make this video more 
interesting for you but I hope I uh, at least make you wonder if you want to hear read or hear this book I recommend the hearing it's uh, a very nice hearing very the actor that uh, that make the, the, the narration as Michael York Michael York is a very nice voice it was very entertaining for me too so uh, that's it for today I hope you enjoy and see you to the see you in the next video bye bye don't forget to subscribe to both channels